Thank you. Um, so this is a work that I've been thinking about for a really long time. Um, it has to do like uh, with, I'm Mexican American and it's a, it's a culture in itself uh, in, in the US, we, it, Chicanos. Uh, growing up, I kind of never really felt in one way or the other, like I was too Mexican enough for the white kids, too white for the Mexicans, so you're kind of like always in between um, these two worlds. And um, I had kind of like, so the project in, in globally is really about connection with, with, your, with your heritage, with my heritage, and trying to understand what that is, uh, especially when you're between borders, and I think probably a lot of us can understand that and speak to that. So this work it was really um, trying to reconnect with that, like going into the history of, uh, there's a lot of research in this project, and that's why I decided to display some of the research here, was to kind of, uh, is an invitation to kind of come into the work. So um, there's an image that I put in a slide there that um, I took while I was doing some of these actions in the desert, and it really is like an invitation to come and, and come with me on this, on this trip. Um, so this project started with the idea of using radio to talk about place, like how can radio speak to place? Um, I think that's a really interesting concept because radio is both very long, it can pass, like we use radio to talk all the way to the ends of the universe, like the two things that we use to find, uh, to explore the universe, our universe is sound and light, or not sound, sorry, radio and light, so those frequencies. So there's something in there about searching and trying, trying to find out who we are, why we're here. Um, and so this work started with the idea of making um, a crystal radio that I could bring with me into these actions on the desert to then like see if I could hear what, what, what this crystal radio would hear. Um, with crystal radios, there's also like this, this uh, idea that they hear spirits. When radios were first invented, uh, Tesla thought that he was hearing um, spirits from another world. So there was kind of like, you know, uh, at play when I was putting this work together. So uh, this work happened in 2019 um, when I went back to where I grew up, which was along the border of Mexico and Arizona in a little uh, city called Nogales, Arizona, which is split in half by the border. So there's Nogales, Arizona and Nogales, Sonora. Um, and my family, when I was growing up, we would always go do groceries in Sonora. And, you know, like my dad worked in Mexico, but we lived in the States. And so there's all this, like, <clears throat> this whole community and culture that's really there. and. Having, I was there until like third grade, at third grade we moved away. And so there was always like, when I was in Seattle, I was always like this kind of feeling like something was missing and like we were farther away from the Mexican community because we were by ourselves up there. And so there was kind of like, as I matured, I felt like a loss of something. And through this project, it allowed me to go back and really kind of like try to, to connect with those, those that sin again. And um, so when I went down there, I brought, you'll see, I just, it's on display here, a uh, little sculpture that I put together um, with some, uh, it's a, the, there's a photo here that's a photo that my father took on one of his uh, adventures across the, the Sierra Madres in Mexico um, that I got from his photo archive. And then there's also a crystal radio that I built that, um, that I brought with me for all these actions. So, um, the, you'll see also uh, an antenna at the top. Um, the antenna was like the main sculptural element and action of this whole work. Uh, the antenna is a design inspired by a folkloric object from, um, from Mexico that my dad taught me how to make when I was younger. It's called an ojo de Dios. And an ojo de Dios is meant to, it's like kind of sees the unseen. And so by turning it into an antenna, it's, it works in the, in the, it hears the unheard, right? Antennas capture things that we don't hear with our ears. And so what you see here is the first prototype to like proof of concept, because the ones that I brought with me to the border, they're like four foot by four foot and they don't fit in <laughs> space. So, um, um, but so what you see here, there, there's, there's a, this is like pieces from sort of a larger installation that has like the, the antennas on display and it's installed like in a fire pit um, but these are like very important pieces that are still presented here um, and the sound that we hear. So basically when I went down to the border, um, you know, there's a lot of this question of home and, and uh, that you know we were talking about kind of uh, being a guest um, and a search for home. Uh, and when I went down to the border, this was 2019, so Trump was president, there was a lot of sort of 
craziness going about children being put in cages and all that sort of stuff. It was right around that same time that I went down there. Um, and I think maybe we've all heard the stories of people getting arrested for leaving water in the desert for migrants. So when I went, I decided to volunteer for uh, an organization called Humane Borders, and their job is to go and fill up water. They have these barrels of water uh, along the migrant paths that they have partnerships with the um, they have partnerships with the landowners. So they go and they fill up these large barrels of water. Um, and so I volunteered with them, and we went in the desert uh, and we filled up these water these uh, water barrels yeah water barrels and so it was like a truck with a big big bunch of water and so um, when I went with them I kind of followed I was taking notes because I knew I wanted to come back by myself later so I was like okay turn at that cactus okay <laughs> <laughs> really because there's no you know like you're really out there in the middle of nowhere and um, and so I was bringing with me uh, the antennas to then want to go because I thought that it was a good place too to like make the connection between people looking for a new home me looking for a home trying to understand home and so when I went to install these antennas, I wanted to go back to those, those spaces where the water was left or along the paths. I thought that it, it was a good, um, good connection. And um, so I brought these with you. I'll do a little story if you guys want to hear it's a good one. Promise. <laughs> Promise is a good one. No, go for it. Um, so I was there. I went with, with the organization. And then the, like, the next day, I, after I looked at my notes, okay, how do I get back there? I borrowed my friend's truck. And I drove out in the middle of the desert. I'm there. I install a couple of antennas that were prototypes. I'm setting them up. They're all plugged in. I'm like turning all the radios on, seeing what I'm hearing. And then like I start hearing voices. And I'm like, what's going on? And so I'm like, I turn, I turn off all my radios. And there's still the voices. I'm like, oh. And so when you're out there, they told me that there's obviously there's border patrol trying to pick up the migrants that are trying to cross. There's the migrants, but then there's also militia. And there's like a lot of. Uh, dead bodies that they'll find out there from militia who are just killing these migrants because they think that they can't and get away with it and there's nobody there to catch them. So either way, when I heard the, the voices, I was like, oh, I want them to know I'm here. I don't want to get them spooked. So I went to the top of this little hill and I'm like, hey, I'm here. And there's like three guys that are down. I couldn't, you know, three, three bodies with like dark clothes and they start coming up towards me. And as they start coming closer, I start smelling them. It was like a really strong odor. And it was three Nicaraguan men that were probably around, I'd say, between the ages of 22 and like 31. Um, so fairly young guys. Um, and they come and they, I'm like, come here, there's water. And I can tell, you know, I can see that they have like these jugs and the jugs are like filled with like brown water. So I'm like, just empty it out and fill it up. And so they, um, they did this, that. And it, they, you know, right away they start asking me like, you know, they see that I have a truck. It's like, can you give us a ride back? back to town, we're lost, we've been lost out here for like, it's been, uh, they said like three days that they've been, they had been trying, they'd been chased by the border patrol and they were starting to go, the way they were coming, they were actually going back across the border. Um, and so I was like, guys, this, you know, I, I can't really give you a ride because there's so many checkpoints. Even if you were to get in with me, like we would all get busted. They're gonna, it's, it's not a good way to get across. So I, I just kind of explained to them, you know, fill up with water, I had some food, I gave them some of my food, and I said, look, the highway's on that side, that mountain range you want to keep on your right and just keep going this way, you know. So it was like a really strange experience to, to meet these gentlemen in the middle of the desert and then like have this connection and kind of trying to understand at that point afterwards, I was like, I, I don't even, I'm not sure if this is the right, if I should keep pursuing this idea because I felt, kind of felt uncomfortable with it, like making art in the middle of this desert and coming across people who are dealing with life and death. It was, it was quite an experience. And the thing, the, the like Mexican spiritual side, I put three antennas up and three guys showed up. <laughs> so it was very, um, uh, I don't know, coincidental, I guess, but, um, or, not. or not, I don't know. Um, so, so what we hear on the audio work itself is the signals that I captured with uh, the antennas. Uh, and I had different, different types of, I had a crystal radio, I had another um, radio that I built that's it's called a VLF, a very low frequency uh, receiver. So the, those ones here like um, kind of listens to the ionosphere, so it listens to space. Um, so what we hear in, in the audio piece is recordings that I, I did uh, during uh, these actions. Um, and some of them I recorded with a cassette player, but the cassette player wasn't spinning fast, was not calibrated properly, so when we hear it, everything is slowed down. So it kind of adds like this other layer of, of mysticism to the, to the music that's there and, and uh, spirits or something.